Today we're going to be talking about color temperature and in particular using color temperature to suggest light in your painting. And I think that's the goal of landscape painting or any kind of painting actually whether it's still life, figurative, it's always going to be uh, to suggest light because the light suggests the form, it's the light that brings out the color, so light is everything. So color temperature is that mixture of warm and cool light, putting them next to each other, warm and cool contrast, uh, that gives us the sense of sunlight and shadow. I'll start with color wheel first. The color wheel, of course, is where all the colors come from. Do this with each one here a little bit. Color wheel has the primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and between, um, when you mix those together, you get orange, violet, green. Then the in-between colors, mixing red and orange gives you red, orange. Red and blue gives you red, violet, and so on. So those are the 12 colors. But the color wheel is also broken up into warm or cool. Depending on different color wheels will have different colors on top. Mine, I just always put red, what I'm kind of used to. So on mine, the warm colors are always on the right side. Red, orange to yellow green. And what they have in common is they all have yellow in them. So those are warm. You use those colors, they're going to suggest warmth. So if I have a sunlit uh, field of grass, I'm going to use more yellow, yellow green, yellow orange in my field of grass, no matter what local color it is. And that's going to make it look warmer. Same thing with shadow. On the right side, I have cooler colors, colors that are affected by blue, from red violet to blue green. They all have a little bit of blue in them. So in my same field of grass, if I have shadow on that grass, I'm going to use more of these colors. Now it might be orange grass, so I'll have orange in it, but I will also add uh, the cooler colors to cool it down and give me that contrast of the warmer sunlit areas. And temperature is also relative. I can have a cool shadow that's almost warm and I can have a warm sunlit area that's almost cool. So you can run the gamut from very extreme uh, strong warm and cool contrast to kind of weaker warm and cool contrast. But let's talk about stronger here just to show the idea of pushing contrast beyond what you would see in a photograph to help your painting. Now that leaves these two colors red and green. They're kind of neutral. These other colors, the other 10 colors are warm and cool. Green and red are neutral. If I want to warm up red, I have to add yellow or orange to it to have a red orange. And if I want to cool red, I have to add red violet or I have to add violet or blue to the red to make it a red violet. So if you have a red barn on a cloudy day, a reddish barn would be more of a true red. But the minute the sun pops out and hits the red barn, then the red barn in the sunlight goes to a red orange. It's not just red anymore, it's a red orange. And in the shadow, the red barn turns to a, a red violet. So that's that temperature change based on sunlight and shadow. So looking at our subject here, this is um, kind of a farm in Mount Carmel, Utah, southern Utah. And it's backlit, we're looking into the sunlight. Thankfully it's blocked by the trees there. But everything upright or even slanted like the hillside, the trees, even the tall grass here is, is shadow. And then everything flatter is lighter or got kind of sunlight or rim lighting on the trees here. Even this tree, there's some lighting on the underside that I want to really emphasize. So my goal here in the temperature contrast is to push that contrast of cool shadows and warm light areas. And of course, values is, is the most important thing. I can have the right color temperature, but if I don't have the right value, it's not going to work. So value kind of goes without saying here. I have to have good dark and light value relationships to make it work. So here's my drawing, drawing stage um, in the painting. I'm using kind of a blue and a cad red here for the shadows. So I start off with cooler shadows. I generally will block, uh, draw or block in my drawing with burnt sienna or burnt sienna or blue. Once in a while I use kind of a muted violet with a little bit of blue in there. What you want to stay away from is bright, intense, opaque colors like cad yellow light, cad orange, or even cad red. This has a bit of cad red in it just to knock down the blue. But I'm pretty much just blocking in the shadow pattern. I've got the light shape here of the sky, light shape of the field, and then a few smaller light shapes 
sky holes in there on the tree. And that's what I want to separate right off the bat is that those dark and light shapes. Very simple dark and light shapes. Don't really have any detail per se. Maybe the path here, which I, I don't think I keep that path. I think it goes away at the end of the painting. So what I start off with first is shadows. And again, I want to push the contrast of temperature. So I'm going to push these shadows a lot bluer than what I maybe see in the reference. So a pretty strong blue-violet, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. Same thing here, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. Probably ultramarine blue with a little um, viridian. And viridian is a bluish green. So I'm, I'm sticking very cool. I could block the tree in more blue, maybe a slightly muted blue, just to keep it even cooler. But that's a, that blue-green is definitely cool. Then from there, fill in all the shadows and then start filling in the lights. The sky here is a just white and cad yellow uh, because, again, that has to be really warm because we're looking at the photograph here, we're looking right into the sun. So when you look directly into the sun, you're not going to have a blue sky and you're not going to have a dark sky. It's going to be really light and really warm. So if I painted this, which is just kind of a blank white, or I, if I mistake it for a really light violet or try and get a blue sky, I'm changing everything. I'm changing the time of day because uh, if I get a darker blue sky, that means it's you know more towards noontime where the sky here would be a lot darker uh, blue. Or if I try and make it violet, then I'm making it more of a cloudy day because I'm making it a cooler uh, muted sky, which is what you have on a, on a cloudy day. But I want to suggest light, so my sky here is going to be a cad yellow plus white. You know, 95% white, but enough yellow to really warm that white up so I have that sense that I'm looking into the sunlight. Because your colors should be geared towards telling the viewer what the light is doing, not towards copying the photograph. Really work towards moving away from that because it doesn't give you a sense of light in your painting. And if you don't have a sense of light in the paint, I don't, your paint is just not going to work. You might have a, a, a copy of the photograph, but it's going to be really unsatisfying. So in here in the field, I've got cad yellow with a little bit of ultramarine or maybe thalo. I forgot which one I used, which makes up a yellow green. So yellow, yellow green, trying to push the light areas that are affected by sunlight really warm. Shadow in here, it's pretty light shadow. So I've got kind of a half and half of, of orange and a little bit of blue or blue violet. And shadow in here, but the shadow in these trees isn't real cold. It's a bit on the warmer side or a bit more on the uh, greenish side. I could have pushed these a bit bluer, more of a bluish green to make them read well or you know, to really stay in, in the shadow. But what I do have here is the sun. And again, the sun's about right there. It's hitting the field here and it's bouncing into the shadow and making it slightly warmer. It's still going to be dark and cool compared to the light area. This is cool compared to the yellow by a long shot. So I still have the temperature contrast there. And here I'm starting to add the lights on the trees. So the minute I put the stronger yellow and yet there's some yellow green in there on these trees, then it makes the shadow look cool because when you have that warm and cool next to each other, you get that contrast, that vibration of warm and cool. So this strong yellow brings out a bit more of a bluer green in this shadow. And I'm adding blue green in the mountain back in here because you've got patterns of darker, cooler trees in the background. Looking at the photograph again, you can see that here, these dark green trees against these lighter, cooler rocks. And I want to show that uh, difference between the two. Now I can go back into these background mountains, which I started with a blue-violet. Again, blue with maybe a little crimson, or maybe deoxazine purple with a little bit of blue. I might have muted it a little bit with a touch of orange, but I had blue-violet mountains. Now I'm coming back into that with a little warmer feel. And this is what I'm looking at in the photograph, is this. And it is a, a muted grayish blue, but it is warmer than the blue-green or the blue-violet at the background. I'm pushing more blue-violet way in the distance just to make things recede and uh, go back. So I'm adding the orange, orange and violet probably into this blue-violet just to pull out those cliffs. Those cliffs are a bit warmer than the trees and of course a bit lighter. But the key is make them cool. Even if I don't come up with this color, I still want it that value and I want it cool compared to the sunlit areas. So don't get caught up in trying to match a color. I certainly didn't match the color of the cliffs here, 
but I think it works. And that's what I care about. And I typically want to use more color than what the photograph gives. Photograph is not going to give you very good color. Not like you can see when you're standing there. So don't hesitate. And this is, this is painting. This is art. So um, use your own color sense. To, and that will help you develop your own color sense when you get away from the photographic color and think in terms of value and color temperature instead of trying to match the photograph. Same thing in the field here. So here I start the grass, I'm scrubbing in some orange, maybe orange and violet or orange and alizarin crimson, the red violet. And that scrubbed into the violet that I started with when I blocked it in, this pretty strong violet, uh, creates that kind of cool orange that I'm after. It's orange grass that's in shadow and adding the uh, yellow, yellow, green, almost green here, but still on the yellow side. And again, the slightly muted blue-green trees. I didn't have to mute them very much, but I, I did, adding a bit of complement to them, like red or red-orange. But it was a pretty strong blue-green. And keeping this more on the blue side. This is more on the violet and orange side to come forward a little bit. So I'm thinking color temperature. It's not that I don't know what colors are going to be there, but it, it, it can be a bit more of a surprise. Because all I care about is getting the right value and the right temperature. But by scrubbing other colors in there to either make them cooler or warmer, you get color variations that you wouldn't ordinarily get when you try and plan your color out too much. Also adding more of a little bit warmer blue-green into the really blue-green trees here. Because the, the sunlight is filtering through the foliage here as you can see in the photograph, filters through the foliage, kind of warms it up just slightly. But there's still a lot of blue in there. Now I want to come in here and hit these tree trunks. And they're cool. This is blue with a little bit of cad red. I want to make sure I get different distances between the tree trunks. I don't want them all spaced equally apart. And I don't want them all going straight up and down or all leaning one direction. Vary the shape vary the, the direction they lean, and vary the thickness a little bit too. Then I come back into those trunks and hit this reflected light, the sun hitting here and bouncing into the tree trunks. Here you can see a bit more. I added some over here as well, but it's stronger in these front two tree trunks. And looking at the photograph, you can see that here. This is that reflected light. Tree trunks are pretty dark. This is the value of the tree trunks here. And then this lighter is the reflected light bouncing up from the grass. And that gives a variation there. So there's the reflected light, adding some details now, adding some smaller branches. This is more the detail part. This is a quick demo, about an hour long. But even if I was doing a you know, larger painting or spending more time on it, I would still sneak up on it this way. I would still block in the shadows all cooler, the light areas all warmer, and then go back into them and start scrubbing in colors to get some color variation. And to back off on the temperature contrast just a bit. I still want real strong temperature contrast, but I, I like to block it in a lot stronger at first so I can scrub other colors into it. That way you get cleaner color mixtures. If you mix everything on your palette, you're going to get more muted colors, which can be a good thing if you're after a more muted painting. But if you want stronger color in your painting, do some mixing right on the canvas, and that will give you some brighter, cleaner colors. But separating that warm and cool right off the bat really gives it that sense of light right off the bat. Just like separating the dark and the light right off the bat gives you a sense of that strong value contrast. Then you can back off. Finished painting, I really emphasized, came back and re-emphasized this rim lighting on the tree and the rim lighting on these trees. Again, didn't take the painting real far, but this is where it would be, even if I wanted to go farther, I would still want to be at this level. And then I can, again, I can start getting more colors in here, maybe get more color variation in the middle ground, sunlit area, a little more color in the trees. But this works because the values are separated, the value contrast and the temperature contrast, really separating the cooler colors from the warmer colors. And you can see I, I really pushed that rim lighting on the foliage here down below. Look at the photograph again. It's there a little bit coming along in here. And it kind of disappears there. There's a lot of sunlit uh, places kind of poking through 
in there, but I tried to push it a bit more to really give the sense of, of the light, the backlighting. Keep those warm and cool sunlight and shadow areas really separate. And if you want to know more about um, color, watch this next video. It's uh, creating interest with broken color. And again, thanks for watching.